Hey everyone, and welcome back to the PTG Rail Routes Learning Series. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Hamburg to Lübeck route in Germany, which is a route that I've not yet touched on on this channel. I'm going to be driving train RE80, which is the 1034 Hamburg to Lübeck service, for a total journey distance of around 62.7 kilometers. Our stops along the way will include Ahrensburg, Bad Oldsloe, Rheinfeld, and finally Lübeck. I'd just like to take this opportunity, as always when I'm recording a video in another non-English speaking country, um, to apologise for my pronunciation should I pronounce any of the place names wrong, and please do feel free to correct my pronunciations in the comments on this video. The train that I'm using on this journey today is the BR112.1 and I'm using the Virtual Railroads Expert Line version of this train. So the BR112.1 has been in service since 1990 and was constructed between 1990 and 1994 with a total of 129 of these locomotives produced. Each locomotive weighs 82.5 metric tons, with a length of 16.64 meters, and a maximum permitted speed of 160 kilometers per hour, or 100 miles per hour, which we will be able to get up to on this journey today. They have a maximum power output of 4,220 kilowatts, giving a maximum tractive effort of 248 kilonewtons, running on the 15 kilovolt 16.7 hertz overhead electrification system which is found throughout Germany. Now in the cab of the locomotive I've actually got to go through a full cold start procedure as this scenario starts with the locomotive completely switched off and I also thought it would be more interesting to do a cold start um, because it just gives you an idea of how to do this should you wish to drive this locomotive yourself from completely switched off. So the first thing I need to do here is to switch on the battery by pressing shift and B. Now that I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is press the forward slash key to release the handbrake. And now that the handbrake is released, I'm just going to zoom in down here on the brake gauge. So the big gauge in the middle of the screen there, we're looking at the two needles on that. So the red needle is the important one, and that's the main pressure reservoir, uh, which should be at 10 bar, but is currently reading at 5 bar. So what I need to do now is I need to press shift and apostrophe to turn on the compressor system. And now the compressor system is turned on, uh, you can see that the red needle is climbing. And so I've got to wait now until that needle climbs all of the way to the number 10, representing 10 bars of pressure. And then once that has happened, I can then reduce the braking. And you can see the needle there, the yellow needle, is actually the brake cylinder pressure gauge. When that's pointing at number 5, then the brakes are fully released. And the lower that needle is pointing, then the harder the brakes are applied. So I'm just waiting now, we're just up to 9 bar, getting very close to 10 bar. And then in a moment I will move the brake handle to reduce the braking to 4.7 bars of pressure. So you can now see the train brake handle just at the bottom right of the screen. I'm just reducing the braking now, just ensuring that we get to 4.7 bars. I don't want to fully release the brakes at this point as we are in fact on an uphill gradient and so when pulling away from Hamburg Hauptbahnhof you do need to bear that in mind to try and prevent a rollback though I actually find that quite difficult in this locomotive. So now the brakes are set the next thing I'm going to do is move the reversing handle into the forward position with the W key and so you just saw the lever on the left of the screen at the bottom there move forward as I did that. Now I need to run the pantograph selection switch. So there's actually three settings. You can use the front pantograph, both pantographs, or just the rear pantograph. And for the purposes of this, I'm just going to use the front pantograph. So press Shift and P. Now you can see pantograph number one is selected. Now that I've done that, I need to raise the pantograph so that the train is in contact with the overhead wires. So I'm just gonna press P to do that. 
Now you can just see if we look over on the left there, the gauge at the bottom indicates the line voltage coming to the locomotive, currently pointing at zero. Now you can see it's just jumped to 15, indicating that there is now 15 kilovolts of power running into the locomotive. Now that I've done that, I need to press the Z key to turn on the main power. The main power is now switched on. And so now I need to um, adjust the tractive effort and brake force lever, which is the lever just in the middle there. You can see it's pointing at the 80, and if I press Y just to reduce it, you can see that coming down and going up. I'll explain a bit more about how that works in relation to the throttle control in a moment, as this locomotive has a rather unique uh, control system. But before that, I need to turn on the CIFA and PZB systems. So I'm just going to press Shift and Numpad Enter and then press Q to reset the CIFA system. That will go off roughly every 30 to 38 seconds while I'm driving. And I've got to press Q to reset that or the emergency brakes will be applied. Now if I press Control and Numpad Enter, I've now turned on the PZB system. And once that's fully on, the 85 lamp should now be illuminated, indicating that we're a passenger train. And if we pass an active PZB magnet and we're doing over 85 kilometers per hour, then we have 23 seconds to slow down to 85 kilometers per hour before the emergency brakes will be applied. I'm not going to fully explain the PZB system on this video today, but in the past, quite an old video now, but I have made a German signaling guide, which gives a fairly good overview of the German signaling systems. I'm going to post a link to that in the description of this video. Now the next thing I'm going to do is press I to turn on the instrument lights and H to turn on the headlights. So we're now actually set up ready for departure away from Hamburg Hauptbahnhof. But before that I just wanted to mention the um, power controller here. So just on the left there if I press A you can see that's just turned on and that's actually the power controller. So on this particular locomotive, there's two ways you can control the power. The first way, which I'm not going to be using on this journey today, is if you move the power handle there up to uh, setting one, so I'll just get that right, so that's just in the on position. And now there is actually a manual tap changer controllable with the R and the C keys. If you look to the middle of the screen, you can see uh, there's a label there that says Fahrstufe and it's got two zeros above it which are yellow in color. So if I wanted to now tap the locomotive up manually, I just press the R key like this, although it's not going to climb at the minute because the brakes are on, and I just keep tapping it up and you'd see that number go up one at a time until we get to the maximum power setting, which I think is something around uh, notch 28. So that's for manually controlling each tap or step of power. However, what I'm actually going to do on this journey today is to use the power controller in the alternative way, which is probably best for passenger trains, um, where you can precisely control the speed. It actually acts a bit like the AFB control, which is the cruise control you'll find on many German trains. So um, to start the train moving, I would release the brakes, and then I will increase the power handle there, and in fact you can see there's a red needle just on the outside of the speedometer which is just to the top right of the screen and as I increase the power then that red needle will climb and it will stop based on the speed that's currently selected so for example if I wanted to accelerate to 100 kilometers per hour I just increase the power handle until the red needle on the speedometer is reading 100 and then the train will automatically accelerate to that speed also, if you'd like to slow the train down, say you've got a speed reduction from 100 to 80 kilometers per hour, then if I just move the power handle back so that the red needle is pointing at 80, then the train will use the dynamic braking system to slow us down, and I'll be able to bring the speed down to 80 kilometers per hour without having to use the air brakes. So this is an automatic tap changing system, and this is where the traction effort and brake force lever comes into use. So it's currently set, you can see, around 60, and if I press C, I can just increase that up and press Y to bring it down. And what this does is, this limits the amount of power that the train 
engine can use for acceleration and braking. You don't really want this on 100% on a passenger service, as if I set the speed set to 100 kilometers per hour, then it will just use all of the power available to the locomotive, and the acceleration rate is rather unrealistic. So I'm gonna generally try and accelerate with that set to around 60 to 80, but I will increase it to 100 if I need to use the power handle to slow down for a speed change so that the locomotive has the maximum dynamic braking force available for slowing down. That pretty much covers uh, the power handle there. And so if we just continue looking around the cab here, I've already mentioned the brake gauges. Um, on the right hand side here you've got the train brake lever there which I mentioned earlier. And we've got the locomotive brake lever above that. So if I just apply the locomotive brake now, that's actually um, a spring-loaded brake. And that's actually very useful to use when you're starting the train moving on a hill. So I'm gonna be using that here on departure away from Hamburg Hauptbahnhof because you can't increase the power setting um, to accelerate the train with the AFB style throttle with the train brakes applied. They have to be released first. So the locomotive brake is great just for holding the train on that hill to prevent a rollback. And then once the um, taps have started changing and we're notching up in power, then you can release the locomotive brake and start the train moving. The final thing to talk about is the horn control, which is a two-tone horn controllable with the space bar and the B key. And so now that we've had a look around the cab, let's just have a quick look outside the train and then we can depart and head out towards Lübeck. Now. Now that it's time to depart away from Hamburg, I'm going to release the train brakes and now I'm going to put the automatic tap changer on with the cruise control set to 40 kilometers per hour. We've currently got the locomotive brake on just to prevent a rollback. And now you can see we've got a number one and now a number two there indicating that the tap changer has started tapping up. And so it takes a few seconds for the power to actually kick in. And once you can see that it started tapping up, then at that point I released the locomotive brake. Um, and that's just to prevent a rollback due to the upward gradient that we're starting on here. So the starting speed limit is 40 kilometers per hour. And at this point, we've got 21.3 kilometers to go to our first stop, which is Ahrensburg. now doing a comfortable 40 kilometers per hour at this point and we're just going to be able to maintain that through the use of the cruise control with the automatic tap changer and um, very shortly the speed limit will be going up further to 60 kilometers per hour. The train that's just overtaking us slightly there on the left hand side is part of the Hamburg S-Bahn and this is actually a network that I've travelled on in real life. Last year I was in Hamburg for um, one night actually visiting the Miniature Wonderland model railway exhibition which is the best model railway I've ever seen. Um, it's in quite a large complex there with um, several different layouts representing different parts of the world and also has a full day and night cycle with a day lasting about 15 minutes before it gradually gets dark and then I think there's something like over 300,000 LEDs illuminate the models so if you do get a chance to visit the miniature Wonderland I really can't recommend it enough and uh, while I was staying in Hamburg I was actually staying in a hotel near Hamburg Airport so we had to take S-Bahn Line 1 from the airport to Hauptbahnhof to travel into central Hamburg. At this signal just here I'm going to have to acknowledge the PZB system as we've got an enforced 60 km per hour speed restriction at the next signal. Though the line speed here is also now going up to 60 km per hour and I can start accelerating at this next overhead wire gantry just before the overbridge. accelerating up towards 60 kilometers per hour and just on our left here is Berliner Tor S-Bahn station.
speed limit in a moment will be going up to 100 kilometers per hour. I'll be able to accelerate up towards that at the next signal that you can see just coming up. So just past the speed post now. And as we approach the signal, I will increase the cruise control setting to 100 kilometers per hour. As you can see, the 85 lamp is no longer illuminating, meaning that the PZB system is no longer supervising our speed. We're now passing Hamburg Landwehr station. We're now coming up on Hasselbrook Station and immediately after passing through the platform here, the speed limit is going up to 120 kilometers per hour or 75 miles per hour. We're now coming up on Hamburg Wandsbeck station and then after the station we're going to pass Wandsbeck sidings and then just after passing the sidings the speed limit will be going up to the full line speed of 160 kilometers per hour or 100 miles per hour. passing the 160 km per hour speed post. So just wait just a few seconds and now I'm going to increase the speed set to 160. So I realize it's been a couple of months since I last uploaded a video. And I've just had a very busy summer and I've been trying to find work and so on. Um, but I am now back this September to make quite a few new videos. And once Train Simulator 2019 comes uh, with 64-bit, then you can certainly expect to see a number of busier scenarios that haven't been covered before. We're now passing Hamburg Tondorf Station. As I was saying, with a 64-bit train simulator, there should be far fewer crash dumps, um, which are primarily caused by um, the simulation's 32-bit uh, limitations, which means it can't use more than about 3.5 gigabytes of RAM before the game crashes. And with 64-bit, then the game should be able to utilize much more system RAM. And as a result of that, we can have much busier scenarios with uh, much denser AI traffic patterns, which, while the frame rate might not be good at times, um, sh certainly shouldn't cause the simulator to crash dump. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about all of the upcoming videos, but suffice to say I've recently been investing in virtual railroads locomotives, which is why you're seeing one covered in this video today. And I've also been investing in RSSLO routes, which are based in Austria, so you can expect to see a number of Austrian videos coming up in the future. 
We're now passing Rahlstedt station with 9.4 kilometers to go. In addition to that, I'm also planning a couple of new US uh, videos coming up soon. And I'm also planning to cover the Rossig Nord route uh, for Trainsim World, which I'm hoping to cover within the next few days, hopefully. Um, doing a journey between Finnentrop and Hagen in a BR143 locomotive. The next landmark that I'm looking out for will be kilometre post 45.6 and that's going to be just after a signal. At that point we've got two kilometres to go to an upcoming 120 kilometre per hour speed restriction. recently been downloading more freeware routes and I found a couple of uh, rather good Dutch routes so along with the Chris train stop that's available I'm hoping to cover a journey in the Netherlands on this channel in the not too distant future. to 45.6 and what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to increase the tractive effort and brake force lever. I'm just going to do that now by pressing C to turn that all the way up and that's to make the maximum dynamic braking effort available to this locomotive when slowing down for the upcoming speed restriction. So I'm now looking out for the warning post and then as soon as we've reached the warning post I plan to immediately, we've just reached it now, so I'm now immediately dropping the speed set to 120 kilometers per hour. to 120 in time. At this point we've got around 1.4 kilometers to go to our stop. I'm now going to move the power handle back to the um, off position. Not quite there. And now I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop just on this point here. And I'm just using the initial step of braking because I actually find that the braking is very effective in this train. In fact, probably uh, more effective than perhaps it would be in real life, though I'm not 100% certain. But certainly with minimal braking, you can see our speeds come off very quickly here. So when shutting down the power handle to turn off the cruise control mode, what you need to do is you need to move it to the setting just above zero. It's actually very difficult to move it into that setting um, due to the sensitivity of the keys. Here at Ahrensburg, I'm aiming to stop near the end of the platform. Also going to reduce the tractive effort and uh, brake force lever there so that we don't have a ridiculous rate of acceleration when pulling away from here. So we should now be stopping in just about the right place.
Departing away from Ahrensburg, we're starting on a pretty much level gradient, so I didn't need to use the locomotive brake this time to prevent a rollback. I've immediately, I have immediately set the speed set to 120 km per hour, which is the current line speed. And at this point, we've got 18.5 km to go to our next stop, which is bad old slow. very quickly got back up to the line speed of 120 km per hour and the speed limit will soon be increasing further to 160 km per hour. Now passing the 160 km per hour speed post, so now I can increase the speed set all the way to 160. Coming up on Ahrensburg Gartenholz Station. The next landmark that I'm looking at for is kilometre post 38.0, at which point we've got 2.6 kilometres to go to an upcoming 100 kilometre per hour speed restriction. with 2.6 kilometers to go. I'm now going to increase the tractive effort and brake force lever again so that I've got the maximum brake force available when I'm slowing down for the uh, speed restriction. I need to apply the brakes just a little bit before we actually reach the speed warning so I'm going to apply the brakes just as we approach the next signal coming up. I believe the warning is around the area of that signal you can see the signal there now. So I'm now going to decrease to 100 kilometers per hour. We're just coming up on Berg to Heide station where the 100 kilometer per hour speed restriction comes into force. Speed is down to 100 just in time there. Shortly after passing through Berg to Heide station, the speed limit will then be going back up to 160 km per hour. So I'm just going to reduce the tractive effort and brake force lever slightly. Speed limit's now going back up to 160, and at this point we've got 10.5 kilometers to go.
We're now coming up on Kupfermüller station with six kilometers to go. The next landmark that I'm looking out for is kilometre post 28.0, at which point we've got 2.4 kilometres to go to an upcoming 120 kilometre per hour speed restriction. so I'm once again increasing the tractive effort and brake force lever to the highest setting and I'm now looking out for the warning for the upcoming 120 speed restriction at which point I will immediately reduce the speed set and that should be roughly the correct distance for slowing down in time for that speed limit. It's now set to 120. So we're down to 120 in time. We've just passed the speed post there with 1.8 kilometers to go. just switch the speed set off and I'm just allowing the train to coast at this point. I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop shortly after a loop starts on the right hand side which is just coming up in a moment. So I've just made an initial step one brake application which is bringing our speed down quite nicely here. In fact, we might be slowing down slightly too quickly. Once again, as I said, the brakes do seem awfully effective in this unit. Here at Bad Oldslow, and once again aiming, aiming to stop at the end of the platform. be about the right place to stop. Departing away from Bad Oldersloe, the starting speed limit here is 120 km per hour, with 8.1 km to go to our next stop, which is Rheinfeld Holst. And the next stop there's now no speed limit changes so we're just going to be accelerating straight up to 120 and cruising at that speed until we need to slow down for the next stop
In a moment we're going to be passing kilometre post 19.6, at which point we've got 4 kilometres to go. So it's passing 19.6 now. And what I'm looking out for next is kilometre post 17, at which point I'm going to idle the power and allow the train to coast. And then I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop around the area of kilometre post 16.4. kilometre post 17, so I'm just pulling the power back now. And we've now reached kilometre post 16.4, so I'm now going to make a minimal brake application, which should bring our speed down quite nicely. Once again here at Rheinfeld, I'm aiming to stop near the end of the platform. should hopefully be about the right place to stop. So as we depart away from Rheinfeld here, we're actually starting on a slight upward gradient of 1 in 160. So I'll just use the locomotive brake to ensure that we didn't have a rollback there. The starting speed limit here is 120 kilometers per hour, with 14.7 kilometers to go to our next and final stop, which is Lübeck.
there's no speed changes along here until just before we reach uh, the area around Lubeck and then the speed limit is going to progressively drop from 90 sorry from 120 down to 90 then down to 60 and finally down to 50 kilometers per hour before entering the platform at Lubeck Hauptbahnhof. The next landmark I'm looking out for now is kilometre post 11.0, at which point we have 10 kilometres to go. Kilometre post 11.0 with 10 kilometres to go. The next landmark I'm looking out for is kilometre post 7.0, at which point we've got 1.5 kilometres to go to an upcoming 90 kilometre per hour speed restriction. coming up on kilometre post 7.0 and so I'm now looking out for the upcoming 90 mile per hour speed warning I'm just going to increase the tractive effort brake force lever just before applying the brakes for the upcoming speed restriction so we've now reached the 90 speed warning and now reducing the speed set down to 90 kilometres per hour too early there. Just about to enter the 90 speed zone and as we do, which we've just now entered, at this point we've now got 2.6 kilometers to go to an upcoming 60 kilometer per hour speed restriction. We've now got 1.6 kilometers to go to the upcoming 60 kilometer per hour speed restriction. So I'm just looking out now for the uh, warnings. First of all, we're going to have a warning for a 60 speed restriction on a diverging route. And then at the second warning board for a 60 speed restriction, that's where I'm going to change the speed set. So just reach the first warning now for a diverging route. You can see it had an arrow just above the warning. now 
reached the warning 4060 limit which applies to us so I'm now just going to reduce the speed set down I might slow down slightly too early but it's better to slow down too early than too late also at this signal I need to acknowledge the PZB for an enforced 50 km per hour speed restriction at the following signal unfortunately around the um, area around Lubeck this game is quite laggy there's quite a lot of detail here um, for the game to load signal coming up I need to be down to 50 kilometers per hour in time for that signal and then I need to further acknowledge the PZB on that signal for an upcoming enforced 40 km per hour speed restriction which actually won't come into force until after our stop at Lubeck I just realized the signals here are possibly not quite slowing down quick enough so I'm just using some air braking very briefly there and we're now down in speed and I've just acknowledged the PZB there at that signal so now I've used the brakes the power controller actually won't work um, it disables it we've actually got to turn the power controller off and on again to try and maintain the speed speed set at 50 kilometers per hour and the powers come back on to maintain the speed here you can see the platform coming up at Lubeck Hauptbahnhof so I'm going to go into the platform and I'm not going to stop at the end I'm aiming to stop around the area of marker D on the platform off and I'm going to start applying the brakes in a moment just to bring our speed down of course um, with these brakes certainly being over effective again and so we're probably slowing down a little bit too quick there and I've released the brakes I'm just going to allow the train to coast until we're closer to the um, marker point where I'd like to stop so you can see marker D is just coming up there on the right hand side and I want to stop just a little bit beyond that should be roughly the correct place to stop and here we are arrival at Lubeck thank you very much for watching this video I do hope that you did enjoy it if you did then please don't forget to like and subscribe and also please don't forget that for the latest channel updates you can find me on Facebook with a link to my Facebook page in the video description and if you'd like to sponsor this channel then please visit my patreon page for more information again with the link to that page in the video description once again, thank you for watching.